the eighth Sunday in ordinary time, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told a parable to his disciples. Can one blind man guide another? Surely both will fall into the pit. The disciple is not superior to his teacher. The fully trained disciple will always be like his teacher. Why do you observe the splinter in your brother's eye and never notice the plank in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take out the splinter that is in your eye when you cannot see the plank in your own? Hypocrite, take the plank out of your own eye first and then you will see clearly enough to take out the splinter that is in your brother's or sister's eyes. There is no sound tree that produces rotten fruit, nor again a rotten tree that produces sound fruit. For every tree that can be told by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorns, nor gather grapes from brambles. A good man draws what is good from the store of goodness in his heart. A bad man draws what is bad from the store of badness for a man's words flow out of what fills his heart. The Gospel of the Lord. An eminent surgeon was walking through the local churchyard one day when he saw the gravedigger having a rest and drinking a bottle of beer Hey you, called the surgeon, how dare you laze about and drink alcohol in this churchyard? Get on with your job, or I'll complain to the vicar. I should have thought you'd be the last person to complain, said the grave digger, bearing in mind all your blunders which caused this graveyard to fill a lot quicker. The news these days seems to be saturated with people who are pointing the finger at rivals for all sorts of dubious motives. When we point the finger at somebody, we're actually pointing three at ourselves. There was a time when people were given the benefit of the doubt, but that's becoming rarer. Many people hint at the smoking gun, and when none is obvious, they often invent one. It was a bit like that with the Iraqi war. They weren't sure whether they were weapons of mass destruction or not, and yet they presumed they were, or invented the fact that they were. The old maxim, a person is innocent until he's proved guilty, is often now, these days, turned on its head. It's so easy to jump on the bandwagon and condemn others, condemn certain persons or institutions regardless of who gets hurt. Is this the plank Jesus is asking us to remove? Did you know that the literal meaning of the word Satan is actually accuser? In the book of Revelation it says, he, Satan, accuses us day and night before our God. Now when we become complicit in the blame game, he can find work for us, and the plank in our eye gets a lot bigger. A couple of Sundays ago, we heard in the Gospel that love is always ready to excuse. People can be laboring under all sorts of pressures when they act out of character, and sometimes people pounce on them. If you notice at the Last Supper, Jesus never humiliated Judas in front of the other apostles, even though we know he was up to no good. When he left the upper room, they thought he was being sent out for food. They had no idea what he was actually up to, and Jesus never explicitly mentions his name. Jesus was also silent when Herod mocked and insulted him. And when the prodigal son turned back on his wayward past and returned home, 
His father didn't read out the riot act to him, but he was actually mightily relieved when he returned home. In fact, he, he put his arms around him and kissed him and asked him to put sandals on his sheep, on his feet, and reinstated him as a son. The elder brother in the story who accused his younger sibling of messing up his life, he turned out to be the one with the plank in his eye. But Jesus didn't humiliate him either. That doesn't at all mean that we're gone soft on sin, but we should be wise enough never to condemn the sinner with the sin, no matter how shameful it appears on the surface. Yes, we should definitely warn people of the bad decisions they made, but never ever write people off. Jesus never did that. In the parable of the wheat and the darnel, the landover warned against weeding out the darnel prematurely because the good wheat could be rooted out with it. That's the danger when we set about removing the splinter from our brother's eye we might overlook all his other or her other redeeming features. St. Paul says, Love is always ready to excuse, not accuse. We leave the ultimate judgment to God who is infinitely just and merciful. He and he alone can set the record straight. Thank you for listening. God bless you all.